Thank you for joining us for this Fox 43 archive special about the storm of the century, the blizzard of 96. What was originally supposed to be just a couple of days of snowfall combined with rain weeks later turned into years of headaches for South Central Pennsylvanians. Coming up in the next hour, we're going to be talking with several folks around South Central Pennsylvania about their impacts during the storm, and you will see plenty of faces from Fox 43 as well. First, we'll start off with just as the snow is falling. <laughs> the official WHP Weather Center forecast. It's a busy day for WHP radio hosts Dennis Edwards and Melanie Apple. They're passing on cancellations and updated storm information. They work the hardest when the weather is at its worst. Our business is to keep people informed of what's going on. And it is, it's the most spontaneous thing. People are depending on the radio on a day like today. So I almost feel some excitement about it. When we open up the phones, people call us. They're usually giving advice to other people. I've been out there and here's what you should stay away from and don't go out if you don't have to. Maria Super is the only waitress on duty at this Eaton Park. The booths are fairly empty, but she does have a few customers. I don't like it. I wish I was at home instead of here, but got to make money. Some of those customers were glad Maria's restaurant was open for dinner tonight. We basically stranded at the hotel next door. Very few restaurants of any kind uh, or any kind of business is opened at all. In fact, we had to walk over here. And at this convenience store, folks are streaming in for the essentials. Groceries, groceries, groceries. Yeah. Bread, milk. Cashier Pat Kent has a pretty good attitude about working during a blizzard. Jackie Wedig and her neighbor are wearing a path back and forth across the street with their snow shovels. The goal is to uncover a few cars, avoid getting frustrated by the weather. My first thought is it's, you know, really beautiful, it's nice, but when it gets this magnitude, it's just a pain in the butt, you know, you get a little stressed because, you know, you have to get to work eventually. And When you have to start shoveling this. This is murder. This is murder on your back. You just have to take it easy. And then we're going to go in and have some cappuccino after a while, and it'll be okay. Mike Krampaski and his dad have been at it for hours, and they're not getting too far. Is this your car? Somewhere. Somewhere. There's an antenna. I think that's mine. It's a Mustang under there. So once I do get it out, I don't know that it's going anywhere. We'll see. It's obvious that the folks along this block have decided it's just pointless to try and dig out their cars. They have a pretty good point. Take a look. I'm standing in the middle of the street. Those that are brave have different strategies. Some fight from higher ground. Others take the direct approach. Whichever has the least amount of snow and is easiest to start with, and then we just work our way around. No matter the method, the folks we talked to were taking the blizzard of 96 in stride. Well, it would be bad if I, if I had somewhere to go. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be out traveling in it. But you know, in, again, this neighborhood, everybody just gets together, and you know, it's not bad since being snowed in. Crews blow snow up the berms on Interstate 83. The roadway is clear, but very few people are supposed to drive on it. In fact, these trucks are being stopped at exit one near Shrewsbury. Drivers are told to sit tight. The roads are closed until 6 in the morning, then we might be able to travel then, but it's slow going because the roads will start icing up again. It's slow going for these crews tonight. They know thousands of motorists will be back on the roads tomorrow, and they're doing their best to prepare. We have a little bit of snowpack left on the interstate. We would anticipate probably tomorrow morning applying salt to that prior to the anticipation of that road reopening. The secondary roads, roads will probably remain snow covered till later in the week until we can get out and open the rest of the roads up. Many PennDOT drivers have stopped their work only to refuel their trucks, and the hours aren't about to get any shorter. I like a one-way ticket to Florida. <laughs> this 17 and 3 quarter inch baby boy came into the world with 30 inches of snow. About 10 o'clock last night, Mandy Yance went into labor. I thought to myself, no, this can't be happening. <laughs> her husband Brad took the snowmobile to check out roads outside their Mastersonville home. He didn't get very far before they were completely blocked by snow drifts. He thought he might be delivering his own baby. <laughs> yeah, the, the thought crossed my mind and it, it, it had me a little nervous, but the, the EMT that was, I was talking to from Mastersonville, she said, you know, just stay calm and time her contractions, you know, if, if the water breaks, lay her down. You know. The new parents-to-be called an ambulance at 1.30. Yeah, I thought, well, they're never going to get through because I know the roads from the storm in 93, it took, it took them two days to dig us out. It took a front loader, plow, and ambulance 90 minutes to reach Mandy, then another 90 minutes to get to Lancaster General. They arrived at quarter of five. I just was still hanging on, and the baby was born then 628 this morning. His name? Dylan James Storm Yens. We ought to do something to commemorate this. I mean, it's the blizzard of the century, right? And, and how often do you have a baby 
on the blizzard, of the day of the blizzard of the centuries. Many drivers get on the roads this morning only to find themselves getting back off them. Emergency crews spend time helping motorists in trouble. Blinding snow this afternoon makes these newly cleared roads a sloppy mess. Stephen Cray of York is one of the thousands of people who hit the roads today and one of dozens avoiding close calls. I saw the guy coming. I saw him trying to make the turn. I said, he's not going to make the turn. I said, he's going to come right at me. Tonight, municipal and PennDOT crews continue their work to clear the roadways. We're not aware of any major problem. John Comey is with the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. He says yesterday's travel ban was the best way to protect public safety. What it did was result in uh, almost probably a record low in accidents. Unfortunately, two individuals did die. That's a remarkable uh, small loss of life. Comey says although you can drive on the highways now, you must slow down no faster than 40 miles an hour on the interstates and 30 miles an hour on other roadways. Without state workers, there are no usual customers. And with piles of snow, there are no parking spaces in downtown Harrisburg. After being closed for just one day, Bob Barton of the Roxy Cafe shoveled out and opened up. We have uh, substantial fixed costs here. I have to pay the rent, I have insurance, I have all kinds of utilities that I have to pay for. One problem for area restaurants is their suppliers and vendors can't deliver. There's no place to park their trucks to unload it. Uh, so, and I also understand they're having problems at their parking lots getting their trucks in there. This Penn Linen and Uniform Service employee says some clients haven't been serviced since last Friday. I guess they care. I don't know. I care about my customers. You know, I know I won't want to run out. And for a second day now, many area banks are also closed. So that means anyone wanting to do personal banking will have to use their bank card. That is if you can even get to your money machine. We all know getting around hasn't been easy, but this mobile station is doing big business, not filling cars, but snow blowers. And even this gas station was snowed in and closed up for a day and a half. We're making up for it today. It hurt us being closed, but we're making up for it now today. But tomorrow and later on this week could be another story. Kristen yeah, Fallon, Fox you. 43 News at 10. Take a walk through the food court at the farm show and you'll see lots of folks happily chowing down. What made you guys come on out today in the middle of the snow after three days of being locked up? The baked potatoes. But the baked potato loving public hasn't been able to get to the farm show. Since the storm hit, the court's been nearly empty. It is until today, and vendors say the crowd's been half of what it should be. It's been a disaster. Farm associations rely on this event to raise money for promotion and for research, but this year they're going to be lucky to break even. We're not going to break even, so we figure we'll have to borrow money, several thousand dollars to meet our expenses. Saturday, the apple growers' sales topped eight grand. That dropped to nothing on Sunday. They think they'll meet their expenses, but that sure doesn't leave much cash for their research projects. It's pretty important because state funding is getting reduced all the time, so we have to help support our own industry the best we can. It's a sticky situation for the beekeepers, too. Our sales right now are one-third of uh, normal. And vendors have only tomorrow to make up for lost dough. Contractors clear snow from the overhang at this Lower Allen Township Mall. They hope to prevent a cave-in like this one at the end of the strip. Well, it's, uh, snow being packed is pretty heavy right now. And once you get down to the bottom, it's all wet and ice. Um, it's just, you know, the wind's blowing it right back on. As far as how much weight is on the overhang, the crews estimate each shovel load is about five pounds. Look how much they got off of just one part of the roof. Folks at Heckinger's got a scare when employees heard the roof begin to crack in the storage area. The roof is bowing slightly, and some of the upright support concrete cinder blocks may have made the cracking noise. The uh, code enforcement officer and also the fire chief, uh, Jim Polly from Laurel Island Township, have advised Heckinger's they need to clear the roof of snow, but the uh, business has been reopened. Even the weight of crews on this roof makes these workers nervous. That's why there's only a couple guys up and I'm down on the ground to make sure people don't walk underneath there so that they don't get hurt. Officials ask that you call your local roofer to clear snow from your own home. It's safer and it frees up firefighters busy with storm emergencies. In Cumberland County, Kristen Fallon, Fox 43 News at 10. There you go, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. I knew when I joined the post office that uh, I had to take uh, the 70 degree, sunny and 70, 
along with the 30-inch uh, snow. It's just, this is my job. Mail carrier Greg Kreiser has a pretty good attitude about Mother Nature's recent temper tantrum. His job is already strenuous. I have to carry probably between uh, 20 and 30 uh, pounds uh, on my back. Uh, I have to carry it for maybe five hours. Now imagine doing that while negotiating icy walks and huge snow drifts. Kreiser knows many of his customers are relying on him to deliver something important. I'm expecting uh, uh, my last check from my last job and uh, to pay the mortgage this month. Uh, it's running a little late. If your mailbox is blocked off by snow, your carrier needs your help. Put out a temporary mailbox like this one. It's a cardboard box, but it says U.S. Mail on it, and it has the address. Just the word mail prominently will usually do it for us. The carriers know where the people live. We just can't get to the mailboxes. Bleacher says employees are catching up on the sorting. Now the delivery trucks are getting the mail to the post office on time. Carriers are already preparing for the next storm, which will hit later this week. Frustrated now, you just, you just keep moving. You just keep moving, you just keep moving. And uh, the faster you move, the lighter your weight gets, and the faster you'll get done. In Lancaster County, Jeff Donaldson, Fox 43 News at 10. Clerks bring up grocery totals as people line up at the checkout. Now, I don't know if it's a York County thing or what, but you go to the grocery store every time they forecast snow. Dozens of choppers push nearly filled carts through crowded aisles. All day at work, customers were coming in saying, there's no bread, there's no bread. So I really knew that, but I was hoping maybe they got a new shipment in until I got there. The bread shelves are empty right now, but store managers are waiting for fresh supplies. We're receiving 24 hours a day, and uh, every truck that comes in, we uh, put five or six guys on it right away, and they, they fill things immediately. Clerks work in the dairy aisle, restocking apple juice. But for other staples like milk and eggs, managers ask shoppers to limit their buying. Some shoppers tonight don't understand the fuss. You're not worried about what's coming? No, really not. No, we got plenty in the freezer and we're ready to go. Rock salt is another staple in big demand. Leaner Service Star Hardware Store has some in stock, but it probably won't last long. I hope no. Service Star gets in here tomorrow to have some more salt. But I doubt for having anything after tomorrow. If we get a substantial snowfall, we will have to shut the city down. We have no other choice. Some York City streets have yet to be cleared. Another snowstorm could paralyze the city. We're very concerned because if it goes to another foot, it'll be a very difficult situation to pal any more snow on the streets. While everyone tries to dig out, York City's plan is to declare another snow emergency. We've seen what we've done the last three or four days, that we can have traffic move and move fairly well and we need their um, cooperation. The mayor encourages city residents to park in the parking garages overnight. The cost is free at nighttime and allows plow operators to clear the streets. If you don't move your car, the city may do it for you. The city is towing cars so front end loaders can maneuver down narrow streets to clear snow. Rich Hinkle and his neighbors have to park in this lot. With another storm on the way, they're still waiting to park on their street. What do you want the city to do? Basically open Philadelphia Street so we can park or open this up so we can park better. But Hinkle and his neighbors will have to wait a little longer. The city is still removing snow, and it's a job that'll take much longer if we get some more of the white stuff. In York, Lenora Adams, Fox 43 News at 10. The state prohibits dairy farmers from storing milk more than 66 hours to keep contamination down. At Perrydale Farm Dairy in York, the milk never got a chance to be stored. About 5,000 gallons were produced, processed, and purchased this week. That's a lot more than a normal week. Uh, we normally have a little bit of surplus we can get rid of. But uh, we, we bottled it all and, and needed more. In a normal week, the dairy's 150 cows produce about 2,500 gallons of milk. And as fast as the milk is produced, it's stocked on these shelves. And from there, it's out the door 14 hours a day. Loyal customers depended on Perrydale Farms throughout the blizzard. Some would not have minded if the milk was stored longer than usual. We lived on dairy farms, so I know how they keep the milk in the coors, and it would stay just as good in there as it does in your refrigerator. Along with more sales, the dairy chalked up more customers as well. When the crunch times comes, when they come to supply for the storms, we see a lot of customers, and we've been seeing some new faces too. So it's not only the old, people, the old customers that are coming back. And if the new customers come back in the next blizzard, they'll find milk ready to go. In York, Roy Frank, Fox 43 News at 10.
As far as the eye can see, the interstate is literally a truck stop. The fresh snow has been causing fender benders and stranding vehicles all day. It's been treacherous. I just came from Glen Rock and uh, I'm going on Harrisburg. It's pretty rough. This trucker thinks it'll take him four or five hours to get 30 miles to Harrisburg. So he and a caravan of others decided to turn around their trucks and cars and drive the wrong way down the highway to exit on an on-ramp. Earlier today was an even bigger mess. Here on southbound 83, outside of Harrisburg, near whiteout conditions made visibility difficult in these traffic jams. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. We've been here for four hours trying to get home, and it's bad, you know, now this truck is up here stuck and nobody wants to go around him. And how'd you like to be this poor guy with a dead battery in the middle of this? But once he gets started, there's not much to look forward to. Unless, of course, you've just been aching for a lot of time to yourself. Oh, it's not that frustrating getting a little paperwork done. The state of emergency means all non-essential vehicles have been banned from city streets since 7 p.m. This keeps streets open so snow removal crews can work. Not everyone likes it. Uh, you can't get out and make no money, therefore you can't pay no bills. I think they ought to have another route of way of doing, you know, doing take care of this, you know, snow and stuff like that. For those who remove the snow, the driving ban is just what the doctor ordered. Well, it keeps the cars off the road so we can do our job. We can push the snow and get rid of it quicker. So as long as they're off the road, the better we are. And the ban is being enforced. We have been authorized by the governor to do this, and uh, we are within our realms to charge $250 fine. And that money might come in handy, because the cost of snow removal is piling up. The mayor says it's costing about $30,000 a day. Thanks to the state of emergency and the snow removal operation, all that snow ends up here. Places like the York Fairgrounds and Bob Hoffman Stadium. Crews hope to have all the snow removed by the time the driving ban is lifted at 7 a.m. In New York, Roy Frank, Fox 43 News at 10. As the snow ended, many thought the worst was over, not knowing the rain that would come weeks later. Now let's turn to businesses simply digging out and life getting back to normal. They came by foot to Lancaster Central Market. You didn't mind trudging through the snow? Yeah, I fell twice on the way up here, crossing the street. <laughs> but it was easy. I just sat down. A driving ban only allows essential vehicles on Lancaster City roads. The ban is in effect until 6 Monday morning. And I know it's a hardship on some of the city businesses as well as city residents, but we have to maximize the National Guard and our contract workers and our own city crews. Comes to 85 cents, sir. So many city residents are flocking to the market for homegrown fruits and vegetables. I'm just doing my grocery shopping here because I couldn't go to the groceries since I couldn't drive there. The plane or the uh, tomato? During any snowstorm, bread is a hot commodity. Rick's French bread stand was selling out of buttermilk blizzard loaves like snowblowers. One customer found an alternative. Uh, yes, bagels instead of bread. You can buy everything from pickle relish and pasta here at the market, but there's one thing you can't get, and that's milk. Despite the lines, Paul Heckenberger, owner of Paul's Seafood, says today's turnout is light. Well, we had, we've had a, good, we had a good day yesterday when it was snowing. A lot of people from the city bought a lot of fish, but today it's been a lot slower. The driving ban is also determining how much some customers buy to carry home. I can't get too much, but uh, enough to get me through the weekend. In Lancaster, Lenora Adams, Fox 43 News at 10. One more time. Members of Emmanuel Church of God join hands in song on the street outside their place of worship. It's the only place they can come together. Snow came crashing through the rafters here, leveling their house of prayer. When this happened, I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know what to think. I just asked God, I said, what is happening? It's a feeling of like disbelief. You know, it's as if you've lost a loved one. So it's kind of, you know, I'm sure we'll go through the stages of grieving, you know. Yet, Father, we realize, oh God, that we are the sanctuary of yes. God. Members hope to gather strength from coming together amongst the rubble. We um, all comfort each other as we're doing here. We come and we pray and we believe the Lord. We know that, you know, we believe certain promises in the Bible. As parishioners look at the concrete blocks that litter the ground now, they say they're just glad they canceled choir practice for yesterday. It would have been going on about the time this building came tumbling down. It just could have been a day of mourning, 
coffins could have been lined up, you know, and families could have been just at loss. Now these parishioners say their task is to move beyond this destruction and think about the future. I think tragedies always bring people together and we often show our best in the face of adversity and so that's what we, we look for. In York, Jeff Donaldson, Fox 43 News at 10. People living in Harrisburg's Shy Polk neighborhood continue to shovel out today as warmer temperatures turn hard snowpacks to mush. Like but these residents aren't end. worried yet. If this isn't augmented by too much more snow, I don't think we're going to have a problem. If it keeps on coming, it's going to be head for the hills. This quiet neighborhood sits right along the Susquehanna River in the middle of the floodplain, and most residents have stories to tell about homes flooded during severe weather. I know when the blizzard was in 93, I knew we were concerned with, well, my mom was, so we had to unpack everything downstairs and get everything up to the second floor. Officials say Hurricane Agnes caused the worst flooding we've had in the area, but other problems have come from heavy snows, snows like the ones we've had in the past week, followed by a quick thaw. This is the headquarters for the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. Officials have been monitoring snowstorms here, and they will continue to watch as the snow melts. We have uh, computerized rain gauges and uh, stream flow uh, gauges uh, placed strategically throughout the uh, the Commonwealth. In the meantime, residents like Shirley Ray protect themselves with current flood insurance. I'll be keeping an eye on it, but what do I do? Stand and shake my fist at heaven? You do what you can and uh, you wait it out. In Harrisburg, Cindy McGrath, Fox 43 News at 10. But this is front wheel drive too. No, rear wheel drive. Mike Treffen wants to rearm himself as he does battle with winter. That's why he's pricing four wheel drive vehicles like the Jeep Cherokee. It'll take you anywhere you want to go. <laughs> I drove one last week, a neighbor of mine, in the snow and it went anywhere you wanted to go. Treffen isn't looking at Jeep solely for his own driving security. He's thinking about his wife too. I worry about her when she's out and I want her to have the a good vehicle. Treffin isn't alone. The more snow that piles up, the better business is here. We've had a, an awful lot of people coming in uh, Saturday as soon as they could get out of their driveway with the idea in mind that, hey, I don't want to go through this again. I, I want to get something that's going to go in the snow. The problem is, people like Treffin might have to dig deeper. Chrysler announced today it is raising the price on the base Jeep Cherokee by $100. The price for a Grand Cherokee goes up by as much as $300. Once the sticker price goes up, that means one of two things. Either the dealership has to eat the cost by passing on some kind of savings, or the cost gets passed on to the customer. People that you were working with, who were uh, the payments were close to what they uh, wanted or didn't want. Uh, this just raises the payment if they're a payment buyer or cash if it's cash buyer. And, obviously has a tendency sometimes to slow down sales. Now we're talking. But not everyone is worried about the price increase. Some say a 4 by 4 is equal to peace of mind when the snow falls. This is just added security and more ruggedness. In Cumberland County, Jeff Donaldson, Fox 43 News at 10. I have a snowblower sitting here that I used throughout the snowstorm. And when I come out about 8 o'clock, the, the blower was gone, just disappeared. Last night, Joe Fry's snowblower was swiped from his own driveway on Clearfield Street in Swatera Township. He was sitting inside, but not even the dog heard anything. It's really shaken Joe, too, because he says this is a safe neighborhood where the neighbors all look out for each other. Well, I feel kind of invaded now, unsafe. Never had to lock the doors or lock anything up or chain anything down. But this isn't the only place a snowblower has been stolen. In the past week, seven others have been stolen in Swatera Township alone. Good morning, Swatera Township Police. Police hear stories like Joe's whenever we have a big storm, but never this many. Apparently, desperate times lead to desperate measures. When you're counting on that piece of equipment to deal with the kind of snow that we have outside today, that puts a whole different uh, spin on it. it. It becomes a lot more personal. Personal to Joe and all the neighbors he's been able to help out with that blower, because now they're back to the old shovel. As plow operators remove snow from one of Lancaster's main arteries, the equipment used gives the street a beating. There's no question the, uh, the removal process is hard on the street. Snow removal money in Lancaster comes from the same fund that pays for city street repairs. So that means spring cleaning or street repair work could be scaled back. So fixing potholes and repaving streets may be done on a priority basis. 
It's up to Richard Nisley, director of the city's public works department, to juggle the monies. So uh, every dollar I spend now is one less dollar that's available to me uh, this, this coming summer for street repair. Go ahead, sir! At least some city drivers seem prepared for what spring may bring. You don't mind dodging potholes or anything? Nope. You just watch for them. You know, there's nothing you can do. She doesn't have the money in the city to pay for it, so... You know, you have to do your best. Of course, the real test of driver's patience will come after the snow melts, when any new road damage will be exposed. In Lancaster, Lenora Adams, Fox 43 News at 10. New Cumberland Borough Highway crews use front loaders to open up clogged storm drains. Dump truck drivers make continuous rounds hauling away the snow. Even the borough's police force is involved. This job has to be finished as soon as possible. If we wait until it rains, it'll be too late. By the time we get around to it, the streets will all be flooded. Uh, there won't be any way for the water to get off. In fact, puddles from melted snow are already forming near the intersections. I anticipate that if we get the rain that is forecast, that people who have never experienced water in their basements are going to see flooding from surface water. This house has been underwater all the way to the top floor. Barbara Stevens lives on Market Street, one block away from the Yellow Breaches Creek and the Susquehanna River. She's no stranger to flooding. These are books I, I really don't want to lose, but I, I've moved them up to the third, just on what people from experience had said that, uh, um, you know, how high the water would come. They're saying trade in a shovel for waders. How do you feel knowing that? How do you feel today? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm, you know, it's staying cold, so I'm hoping the best. And so are these borough crews. They're doing the best they can to prevent basement flooding. Officials say once the water seeps in, there's nothing they can do. Because there's nowhere for us to pump it that it won't come right back in. As folks dug out, temperatures started to warm. Melting, though, could cause its own problems. Combined with rains and a storm to the north, a storm of our own was brewing in south central Pennsylvania in what would end up becoming one of the costliest disasters in central PA history. So 6 liner 2 3, contact Reading Approach 125.15. Operators working inside the control tower at HIA have had a busy night. Flight schedules keep changing because of dense, thick fog causing poor visibility. It's been an hour or more since anybody's been here. Inside the terminal, passengers line up near the ticket counters trying to rebook canceled flights. Tracy Roadcap and her 15-month-old son Cody sat on a plane at the end of a runway for seven hours earlier today. When they finally brought us back to the gate, they said they weren't sure whether they were going to cancel our flight or not, if it was officially canceled or not, but we could at least get off the plane and walk around the terminal for a little bit. And then they finally did say that our flight was canceled. Many passengers wait for rides. Others hit the phones to find overnight lodging. Deb Reisinger and her son pass the time with crayons and a coloring book. Deb has a four-hour wait for her husband, whose flight was delayed. I just will be glad when he gets home, when he gets here. Downpours drown the area as last week's snow melts into flood water. Andrew Dabowski of Lancaster empties buckets from his leaking basement. He thought he took precautions. During the two storms, what I was doing is I was moving all the snow downhill to prevent this and it didn't work. Days like these keep those in the waterproofing business busy, although much of the damage is already done. If it's paneled, there's rotting paneling at the bottom or wet carpets. Um, sometime it'll get on appliances and rust out the appliances, uh, drywall damage, um, tile damage. We thought driving in the snow was a challenge, but one of the problems with the flooded streets is that you can't tell how deep the water is and you can't tell what's underneath, like debris, potholes, and ice chunks. In York, Derek Ritter's car stalled in high water, leaving his family stranded. We were coming around the turn up here and the water was up to about a foot. And you came around the corner and it just shut off. And we had to push the car out of the water. Flooding behind Dressler Welding in York sends dumpsters and empty propane tanks swimming through the yard. All owner Tom Skeen can do is wait to clean up. Just go out and sweep up a little bit. I hold, hose things down and put them back where they belong. Recover the cylinders and put them in the corner where they belong. And hope the flood of his troubles ends here. Kristen Fallon, Fox 43 News at 10. We begin in the sky over Harrisburg, flying over Cameron Street, where you can see water covers the street and has swamped several businesses. Nearby, the State Farm Show Complex is also surrounded by flood water. Ironically, inside the building, dozens of boats as part of the Auto and Boat Show. 
Passing over Front Street, you can clearly see how far the river has pushed its way on the land. Homes are flooded and ice jams Front Street. The governor's mansion does not escape the water. The governor spent last night at a state police barracks and the rest of the first family with friends. The swollen river rushes through the gap in the Walnut Street walking bridge. The water and ice snapped the footbridge yesterday, sending it down river. Tonight, portions of the mangled bridge remain trapped against the Market Street Bridge. City Island remains above the water, but not completely. Much is covered, and as you might expect, there is damage to pavilions and buildings on the island. Flying back to the east shore of the river, the Shypoke area of Harrisburg is devastated. The river is flowing through homes and apartments. You can really see the depth at the Interstate 83 ramp at Front Street. Heading downriver, Three Mile Island stands above the water, no problems here. But a bit further south, homeowners in Wrightsville, York County have left their homes just in time to watch the river move in. And right across the raging river, in Columbia, Lancaster County, the scene is pretty much the same. Water and ice and mud fill homes, businesses and streets. And all of a sudden, another rush of water came in. That was up to my knees. So I couldn't, I couldn't save anything. Shirley Woodham can't believe it's all gone. The photographs of my brother. I've only have one brother now and my friends, you know. And I couldn't even get my Bible. She and others in Long Level hold back tears as they examine their ruined homes. The water rose fast and furious, spilling six or seven feet deep into the street. Many escaped with only the clothes on their backs. We have hundreds of homes. We may have uh, uh, road structural damage. We've got a bridge structural damage. The destruction is astounding. Total with my home in the marine, Long Level Marina, I probably took a million dollars in damage. This is just one example of the river's tremendous power. When the water crashed over its banks, it brought with it tons and tons of ice and other heavy debris. And while the water has receded for now, it has still paralyzed many people. In my home, for example, took an iceberg right through the glass windows in the front. These folks are used to a little flooding here and there, but all this water, the ice and the refreezing, is the worst. If you don't recover from one of these things in a week's time, uh, this is going to be an ongoing, long process. I've cried enough tears to cause another flood, I think. What was once Ron Lawson's summer home is now a houseboat. We're hoping maybe we could get some things out of the place before the water came up, but uh, obviously we're a little late. Others were able to beat the rising tide in time to save their boats. For the residents who own homes here, they say the water isn't so much of a problem because the water will eventually go away. But they say afterwards, it's the debris and mud that's left that they have to clean up. Bruce Myers uh, had to clean yeah, up after floodwaters before. 78 was our big flood. That was the highest water level we ever had here in history. Even as trailers are being salvaged, the residents who live near the river are optimistic. It's a great summer place. and. Uh, Nice place to have a cottage, but uh, this isn't that uh, isn't that typical. You just rebuilt. Thank God we have flood insurance. In York County, Lenora Adams, Fox 43 News at 10. It's it's a pain. A gymnasium filled with army cots has turned into home for 104 Harrisburg residents. It's an emergency shelter for people flooded out of their houses and apartments. What choice do we have? You cannot stay in the apartment when they cut the heat off and they cut the electricity off and you can shut the water off, I believe. I'm on the sixth floor. People on the first floor are uh, devastated. Um, I've heard that it's been, uh, it's six feet on the first floor. 80 streets in the Harrisburg area are underwater in many places impassable. Some cars try to move through the walls of water. The, the last two weeks uh, in this city and region have been an extraordinary period of time, virtually unprecedented. The mayor says this flood will cost the city tens of millions of dollars. Many business owners are already watching their livelihoods disappear. They forced today it's enough that you can really just shut the doors and get out of the business. And those forced out of their homes figure this weekend will be a long and difficult one. I'm probably going to sit here all night long. I, have no, I can't go outside, that's for sure. Police block off Route 441 in Columbia. Only emergency and utility vehicles are allowed past this point. Carl Reisinger was evacuated from his home early this morning. Tonight he's trying to get back. My life savings, sitting there. You know, I worked 30 some years, but 
I like to go down and check, make sure everything's okay, then I leave. At the Borough Park, PPNL crews wade through water looking for transformers. They need to shut off electricity to flooded buildings. Uh -huh. Columbia Police Sergeant William Myers checks an overflowing creek. The water's actually gone down a bit, leaving these ice packs behind on the roadway. Have you ever seen it like this before? Uh, it's been up, but not this high. So never like this yet. One, two, three. In Marietta, some people move their belongings into large trucks to haul to higher ground. The Arnell family is taking everything that's not nailed down or bolted in. Joanne, why did you decide to move the whole house? Because my mother's been through all the floods here in Marietta. Other neighbors are clearing out their lower floors. To try and get things prepared, we were moving some furniture and that type of thing to the second floor, just to, rather safe than sorry. How do you feel right now? Well, a little keyed up and nervous and tired. <laughs> That flooding, certainly made worse by the snowfall of just a couple of weeks prior, brought devastation across south central Pennsylvania like many had never seen before. Certainly not since Hurricane Agnes back in 1972, a quarter of a century prior, and unlike anything we've seen in the three decades since. South central Pennsylvania would recover, but it would take state and federal aid to do so. At times, the going is a bit rough, but Senators Rick Santorum and Arlen Specter tour the flood-damaged areas of Harrisburg. The Senators are hoping to use this information to get as much federal aid as possible for flood victims. When I, uh, when I have seen uh, what is here and in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre and uh, Pittsburgh, it's, uh, it's tougher than what I'd expected. Governor Tom Ridge and James Lee Witt of the Federal Emergency Management Agency met and watched videotapes of the flooding and recent blizzard. When you're dealing with individuals and communities who have suffered loss through no fault of their own, through a natural disaster, I believe that you err on the side of the victim. <laughs> they emerged from a meeting saying they wanted to work as partners to help flood victims. Witt says FEMA is moving as quickly as it can on Mr. Ridge's request that individual disaster aid be extended to 58 counties and to governments for flood costs. The president wants to make sure we cut as much red tape and bureaucracy as we can. And uh, I can promise you we will do everything we can to make that happen. Mr. Ridge says he will not apologize for blasting federal officials for not responding to his initial requests. The governor declined to fire back at White House Press Secretary Mike McCurry, who said Ridge was in a public relations contest. I don't want to talk to him about me. I want to talk to these uh, gentlemen about Pennsylvania. I'm Susan Schrack with the latest from Lancaster and York County. The muddy brown water streams on endlessly, and many Marietta residents haven't even started on their basement. I got 18 inches on the first floor. Once it was in, it froze because we don't have any power or gas or anything. There's water up there on those bricks. Um, it got in through the door, maybe. Yeah, let's give them minor. The Lancaster County Red Cross travels the Riverside towns assessing damages. Close to 100 to 150 homes had sustained some type of damage. So right now we're going out to verify that and trying to get assistance to people who needed it. To get federal aid, the county must have a minimum 25 homes suffering 50% damage and uninsured owners. Although it did suffer extensive damage, Lancaster County did not make the list for federal aid. And here's a perfect example why. Just across the river in York County, the structural damage is simply overwhelming. And it's, it's devastating. It's just stood around and it looks like, oh my God, where do you start? It's unbelievable. But the cleanup has to start somewhere, one task at a time. Cleaning off the deck, getting rid of the ice on the deck, uh, trying to get the heaters running. Both counties cite losses in the millions, and while federal aid eases York County's financial burden, residents know their recovery is still many months away. Susan Schreck, Fox 43 News at 10. Front-end loaders scoop up chunks of icy water on Market Street in New Cumberland. Officials say this community suffered the most residential damage out of all the West Shore communities. Yeah, it's a mess. It's what I expected. Sherry Ziegler checks the pool of water in her basement. It's about four, four feet, feet right deep, now. but the damage is visible on her so first floor. Hello. Water squishes out of her carpets, and her brand new kitchen tile is covered in red clay. Where do you even start? I don't really know. It's get everything dried up and get shovels in, get the ice out, and rip everything up, and 
Go from there. Good evening, sir. Where do you need to go? National Guards will check the identification of drivers in cars and trucks. This area is restricted to residents only. These barricades will stay up at 3rd and Market Street, and the National Guard will be on duty overnight into tomorrow. They plan to keep an eye on any residents who want to stay overnight. But the officials caution residents down, not to, to rush back into flood-ravaged homes. But for the time being, they shouldn't rush into their homes. They should go in, clean up, get rid of the mud, check everything very, very thoroughly, stay where they've been, and keep coming back to that home until things are back to normal. For these residents, back to normal can't come too soon. In New Cumberland, Cindy McGrath, Fox 43 News at 10. Bob Lutz chips away at the glaciers left behind by floodwaters in his parents' front yard. Those waters reached the top of the front stoop yesterday. It's upsetting for my parents because, as I said, this is, this is their home. You know, and so much stuff is here, so much, so many of their years are here. Inside, couches are propped up on end tables because the carpet is wet. Then there's the basement, filled with six to seven feet of water. It'll be a month before the Lutzes can recover. We've been lucky, let me put it that way. Uh, in 72, we were in the 72 flood. We had seven, almost six, seven feet of water in our living room. I was in the 72 flood. And the difference, in the 72 flood, the water came slowly. This time, Christine Meyer says the waters came much faster. Look at her basement. It was completely flooded, nearly to the first floor. Her refrigerator took a walk across the basement, and she's going to have to replace her dryer. Until I came here today, just now, I had no idea, you know, what the damage was. We came up yesterday and tried to get in, but the whole house was surrounded with water. And but Myers considers herself fortunate, too. My son's safe. I'm safe. Everyone in my family's safe. My neighbor's safe, and that was what was important to me, so... Lisa Amico Cook tackles the mud and slop recent floodwaters dumped into Nick's Cafe. A mess, a total mess. Everything was upside down, dirt, gook, everywhere. <laughs> down come the walls, and the bar area and the floor must go too. Most of the workers are also patrons. It means a lot to me to get these guys back open again so they can start again. That won't happen for at least three weeks. About five feet of water submerged New Cumberland businesses within three blocks of the Yellow Breaches Creek. The loss is in the millions. For business owners in New Cumberland, the structural damage isn't quite so bad as the actual loss of business. For example, this convenience store was fully stocked when the waters rushed in, and they had to get rid of everything. The water was in there completely. And the tiki bar that was there, that's down in the Chesapeake Bay now. But in Wormleysburg, Vince Catalano lost everything. Ice wiped out both Catalano's and Angelina's restaurants. We cried for quite a few days. This is my first day without the tears. Here, they're not cleaning up, but clearing out. But we're going to total the building. We're going to rebuild completely. With a half hour's flood notice, I mean, they could the only save their famous pictures. There, and these like will hang on the walls of the new the Catalano's in six before. months. Start fresh, start clean. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Susan Track, Fox 43 News at 10. Signs of the flood are scattered along Route 182 in Spring Garden Township, and the worst of it may be to come. Survey crews say flooding and freezing are causing the road to buckle and crumble. Over the night when we go down below freezing, that water freezes, and wonder if when it freezes, expands, and it just blows the blacktop right out of the ground. The snow line shows us just how high the water was. It moved over the road on Friday, but then froze over the weekend, so it was in place through Monday, creating even more damage. Pieces of the white line lay along the banks of the Cadoras Creek. Trucks going to a nearby quarry chip the edges off the blacktop, exposing the saturated base and old pavements. You could say it looked like it might have been mortar attack or bomb. Phil Breitner and his wife have lived along Indian Rock Dam Road for more than 30 years. They come along and they fill the holes with a little bit of sand and some stones and go about their business and four hours later it's the same way it was when they started. PennDOT says repairing this means complete reconstruction with a new base, shoulder, drainage system and surfacing. And crews are still at the mercy of Mother Nature. Work can't get started until it gets warmer. In York County, Kristen Fallon, Fox 43 News at 10. The American Red Cross delivers hot food to the few residents left at the Meadowbrook Mobile Home Park. Many of these homes sit right on the banks of the Yellow Breaches Creek. The way I see it, I'm not going to be staying in this because I don't think I want to go through that again. Daniel Miller has had enough of the high water. Tonight he's moving his van to higher ground and sleeping in the back. If it's going to be near flood stage, I don't want to take that chance. Sandy Treese is cleaning her home tonight. She says she's not worried about the afternoon rain shower. I, I don't think it'll come back up again. I have faith <laughs> that it won't come back up again. No. 
Yeah, I, th I feel pretty good. Uh, who has sustained uh, flood damage and Harrisburg loss. Mayor Stephen <laughs> Reed says the city barely felt the effects of the storm. The Paxton Creek is high, but still below flood stage. The same goes for the Susquehanna River, but officials will keep an eye on both through the weekend. The amount of rain that occurs in the Harrisburg area really doesn't affect the river level here. It's the rain that occurs north of us that comes down and, and gives us the headaches. They had about 30 inspectors and they hope by tomorrow to have about 100 in the field. Federal emergency management teams trudge through soggy, icy New Cumberland, visiting flood-worn homes. All week, they've seen muddy living rooms and watermarks. Looks like from the uh, water line on the door there, you must have had a uh, substantial amount of water in the house here. Yeah. Janine Smith yeah, is one of 8,000 who's applied for federal disaster aid. Her house is ruined. The kitchen hit especially hard. She must replace everything. Uh, stove, refrigerator, all the bottom cabinets, um, the floor, the, at least one wall. This first floor is pretty bad, but at least the kitchen appliances and the structural damage are covered under flood insurance. But there's still a lot more that isn't covered. Just take a look at this. Just the dryer, the washer, the gas heater, and the deep freeze will total at least $5,000. Let me just get a measurement on that. Smith's flood insurance does not cover contents. He's hoping a federal check will help. So far, FEMA's mailed out 11. The average check was about $3,800. It may not sound like a lot, but FEMA must divide among thousands of victims. We do try to um, uh, get the house back to being habitable. Which for Smith and thousands more will take quite some time. Susan Chirac, Fox 43 News at 10. If you look curbside down 2nd Street, it's not hard to guess which homes flooded this week. I've been down in the basement all day. Derek King is still cleaning up from last weekend's high water, and he's not ready to start pumping out again. As soon as I hear uh, that it's going to be around 17 feet, I start getting a little concerned because in between 17 and it usually goes a little bit higher than that. And then I start looking around the house to see whether or not I'm taking in any water or not. This is how the Susquehanna looked around 5 this afternoon. You can see the water's at about 17 feet, which is flood stage. The American Red Cross distributes dinner to a few Shypoke residents. Many of these homes have suffered extensive damage, but some residents say they are not worried about tonight's crest. I think the worst already happened. You know, I don't think it can get any worse. I mean, if it does, it does. You can't help that. Debris and trash flood the streets in this Harrisburg neighborhood. So you pretty good? Yeah. Members okay. of Vision's Youth Works come out in full force, cleaning basements, removing carpeting and ice chunks. All this for people they don't even know. I just felt sorry for why everybody had to move out their own homes and lose a lot of things. Now the volunteers' efforts will help folks in flood-riddled areas get back into their homes a lot sooner. But they know that the reward for them will come long after the floodwaters are gone and the trash is all taken away. They earn their GED, build homes and better lives for themselves. Former U.S. Senator Harris Wofford heads a national movement aimed at doing the same. It's called the Corporation for National Service. I work hard. Today he gave local volunteers a pep talk. The Visions project is itself a pioneer project of how you turn around young people, uh, many of whom had dropped out of school and set them on a course of productive workers and good citizenship. YouthWorks organizers say they can already see the difference. It was a pick-me-up for them to help people because, you know, they could see that they were in darn need. It's a real clue to what we need to do uh, on our other problems without a disaster to challenge us. That's what these YouthWorks members are already working on. In Harrisburg, Kristen Fallon, Fox 43 News at 10. From the air, you can see how floodwaters took a huge bite out of the Walnut Street Bridge. Significant damage. Uh, Today, some people from Washington surveyed the damage up close. It's similar to devastation they've seen in other parts of the country. Earthquake in uh, California, flooding along the coast. Uh, I mean, and this is just the kind of challenge that we have to work uh, together in partnership to, uh, to address. Washington could pick up 75% of the repair cost for the bridge, with the state picking up the rest. Walking is transportation, too. And there are folks who walk on this bridge every day, and for who? Their personal mobility. Uh, this bridge is every bit as important to them 
as the fellow who drives his car on yet another bridge. Harrisburg Mayor Stephen Reed says he's glad to hear the federal and state governments will combine to help rebuild this bridge. He says it's more than just a footpath. It holds some historical significance. This pedestrian bridge never buckled during the Agnes floods. This winter, ice made the difference. The Walnut Street Bridge collapse is literally related to the force of ice building up uh, underneath and against the bridge and its pier, and that's what pushed it down. And Reed says once the Walnut Street Bridge is rebuilt, Harrisburg will clearly be on the road to recovery. In Harrisburg, Jeff Donaldson, Fox 43 News at 10. Yeah. Long Level Marina. Dick Heckman yes. cleans up his marina in Long Level. His nearby home is destroyed, but he won't show us where he lives because he's afraid of looters. In fact, he thinks someone was already inside. Things were disturbed, I, and it's not secure. So. And he says it's hard to tell whether goods were taken by intruders or floodwaters. And I thought maybe it floated away because the windows are blown out in the front of the house, so uh, some things probably could have floated out. Water filled the dome's front yard last week. This week, it's an outpouring of kindness. The neighbor's been a big help. We've been helping them. People have been coming down offering help. But Long Level isn't immune to trouble. Police reports show that during the flooding of 1958 and 1972, there was looting here. What they're trying to do now is prevent history from repeating itself. And we have been you know, making a lot of patrols down here. Uh, I've been bringing in extra people on the weekends to basically come down here to assist the residents, to patrol, keep an eye out on things. About 100 long level homes are flood damaged. Some are still uninhabitable. But neighbors who are back home promise to stay on alert until all is back in ship shape. In York County, Kristen Fallon, Fox 43 News at 10. Workers remove huge chunks of wreckage from the Susquehanna River. January's raging floodwaters broke a portion of the Walnut Street walking bridge and sent the debris floating downriver. It collected around the Market Street Bridge and is putting stress on it. And what we're afraid of, if uh, we do get the, the river gets down low enough, it starts freezing again. We don't want ice forming around it and freezing. That'll put a lot more pressure on it. The bridge is only closed to motorists. The sidewalk is still open for pedestrians who want to travel across. While the debris is thrown to the side, Sam Reed videotapes the work for PennDOT. What I'm taking, I guess the engineers will probably view it and probably just to see what was salvageable and uh, what we recovered and what, whatever is left down there to be able to determine if anything is down there. PennDOT isn't the only one documenting the work. My wife was out the day of the flood with her video camera and uh, now I'm taking still pictures for her. We just want to keep, you know, records up. We were up here during 72, uh, 72 flood, so, you know, this is to keep, keep going with it. And this weekend, workers will keep removing debris until it's gone, possibly by Monday. In Harrisburg, Lenora Adams, Fox 43 News at 10. The sounds of customers talking at Catalano's restaurant is replaced by workers tearing the restaurant apart. Last month's raging floodwaters claimed Vince Catalano's 19-year-old family business, but not the family spirit. We're hoping for a July 96 opening, hopefully, depending on weather, depending on approvals, and depending on the FEMA. So far, the FEMA check hasn't been in the mail yet, but the three generations of Catalanos aren't giving up hope. Whether FEMA comes through or not, we have to go uh, find monies elsewhere. But we're going to find it. We'll get it. We'll rebuild. Rebuilding will soon begin next door at Angelina's restaurant, too. When the doors reopen, it'll be called Cronies. Even though the water is gone, the problems and the cleanup continues for residents in Shypoke. This is what Shypoke looked like last month. Although the water has been drained out of basements and first floors, sounds of workers cleaning is in the air. But for many residents, it'll be some time before they can return home. The extent of the damage with the flood and the fire, you just have to settle in and realize it's going to be nine months to a year until this, this, this project's completed. But they are determined because this is home. Lenora Adams, Fox 43 News at 10. During the blizzard of 96, road crews worked for days to clear the roads. All the white stuff threatened to push state, county, and local budgets into the red. I'm not quite sure that the president and the folks down there in FEMA understand how serious the storm was. During the worst of the storms, Governor Ridge asked Pima to petition the federal government for disaster assistance. State officials hoped they would be reimbursed $100 million, just like they had in the past. 1993 was a federally declared 
disaster. 1994 was a federally declared disaster. John Comey is a spokesman for the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. Comey says this year, FEMA changed the rules. This year, FEMA imposed a new definition of roadways. And as a result, we received approximately $30 million. Or and so. that means Pennsylvania has $70 million less to pass on to county and local governments. Work that would have been done, work they had planned to do uh, elsewhere in the maintenance program, uh, streets being paved, parks being built. That work had to be put aside or suspended. Lieutenant Governor Mark Schweiker says Governor Ridge is continuing to talk to FEMA about the funding. There ought to be uh, dough for snow. We need the reimbursement as a result of all that snowfall. Cindy McGrath, Fox 43 News at 10. Now there were some positive surprises that happened out of the storm. Fox 43 Cindy McGrath caught up with a child born during the blizzard one year after. <laughs> this is Cindy McGrath. Check that out, man. <laughs> Little Dylan Yangst is trying out a birthday gift from his grandparents. Early tomorrow morning, he'll be one year old. Dylan's mom, Mandy, went into labor during the worst of the blizzard of 96. She woke me up at 12 o'clock and, and told me that, and I just said, you got to be kidding me. I said, you, you can't be having a baby now. And I looked outside and saw all the snow, and it's like, no, <laughs> this can't be real. The first thing I did was send him out on a snowmobile to see if we could possibly get through with our truck, because we do have four-wheel drive. And he wasn't gone more than five minutes, and he came back, and he said, no way. This is what the family had to do to get to Lancaster General Hospital. Brad Yanks took this home video as township crews used a front-end loader to open up the road and let the ambulance through. That was the best sight I ever seen when I, when I looked up the hill and seen all them flashing lights. The Yanks got to the hospital just before 5 a.m. Little Dylan was born at 6.30. The Yanks saved the newspaper articles from Dylan's birthday one year ago. They say when he gets old enough, this is how they'll begin to explain everything they went through in the blizzard of 96. I've thought about it every day, you know. Every day that I look at him, and I'd go through it all again. I mean, he was worth it. In Ratboro Township, Lancaster County, Cindy McGrath, Fox 43 News at 10. That child, that family, proof of the strength of South Central Pennsylvanians to weather any storm. This has been a Fox 43 Archive special, The Storm of the Century, The Blizzard of 96. I'm Chief Meteorologist Braden Long. Thank you for joining us.